హలో వెల్కమ్ టు మోడ్యూల్ సిక్స్టీ ఆఫ్ ఎన్పిటిఎల్ ఎన్ఓసి అండ్ ఇంట్రొడక్టరీ కోర్స్ ఆన్ పాయింట్స్ టెక్నాలజీ పార్ట్ టూ సో టుడే వి షెల్ కంటిన్యూ అవర్ క్లాసిఫికేషన్ ఆఫ్ వన్ డైమెన్షన్ మ్యానుఫోర్డ్స్ విచ్ వి స్టార్టెడ్ లాస్ట్ టైమ్ బిగినింగ్ విత్ ఏ ఎనీ మ్యానుఫోర్డ్ విత్ ఆర్ వితౌట్ బౌండరీ ద ఫస్ట్ థింగ్ వి విట్ ఇట్ వాస్ to reduce the proof to the case of manifolds without boundary and now look at a manifold without boundary take a cover by uh, coordinate neighborhoods as soon as there is a cover there will be a countable sub cover because the manifold is second countable the next thing is we want to understand how the two intervals I and mean two open subsets which are homeomorphic to intervals right they are all coordinate neighborhoods means they are homeomorphic intervals how they intersect in the whole space x so we we made two uh, list of things which are which are visual which are which we want to happen and one of them we consider namely when the two open intervals like this they actually intersect in a very nice way like this then we could we could get a, a map to the union okay from a open interval which is a homeomorphism so the union itself was an open interval with a homeomorphism so this was a nice case the next case that we want to consider today is that two of them have intersection two components and they intersect like this properly not like that or that and so on so the two things are coming this way just the way in the first case and the other one also coming nicely like that so this is the case we want to understand now and this is on desirable case so that is the first one after that we will see that these are the only two cases possible so that will allow us to complete the classification okay so start with any connected to one manifold psi i from ai bi to ui be any two local parameterization such that u1 intersection u2 consists of two components i am just labeling the two components a comma b the first thing is psi1 inverse of a is a1 comma c1 okay see the the domain of psi1 is a1 b1 so this psi1 inverse of a is a1 c1 and psi2 inverse of a is c2 b2 see the domain of psi2 is a to b2 so c to b2 so here it is starting at one end first end here and other one is ending at the other end so that is the hypothesis these are all hypotheses the second or third part is psi1 inverse of b exactly the opposite here it is d1 b1 and psi2 inverse of b is a to d2 so this is the this is the other end right end this is the left end and so on okay the third condition is now look at on the intersection psi2 inverse of psi1 starting from a uh, part of the interval a1 b1 go into the u1 intersection u2 then take psi2 inverse come back to the interval part of the interval a to b2 so from interval to interval this is a homeomorphism that must be order preserving on both the intervals namely the first portion second portion a and a and b correspond to a and b so first portion will be a1 d1 okay to c2 b2 okay so that is what uh, we want so it could be a1 b1 a1 c1 a1 c1 and d1 d2 doesn't matter and the other one will be d1 b1 to a2 d2 so both of them should be order preserved then m is homeomorphic to s1 
the conclusion is of course there are four different conditions i assumed here even before that there are only two of them you have to have and we have already assumed that that none of them cover the other one and so on remember that in any case the intersection consists of two components with this part automatically gives you that u1 and u2 are not uh, so contain one contain in the other okay so that that is uh, not there is no need to separately state it so conclusion is that the union will be now homeomorphic to a closed interval closed uh, manifold namely the circle itself the entire m is circle in other words whenever such things happen there is no other open subsets open intervals and so on the whole, whole m will be union u and union u2 so this is the whole idea okay let us see how the proof the proof is not all that difficult once you have understood the previous one so here so just look at the picture a1 to b1 you have one coordinate neighborhood u1 okay psi1 and here a2 to b2 you have another one psi2 of course the final picture i have put it nicely but right now you have to assume that this is some manifold that's all right so this is u2 part homeomorphic to uh, that one and that is the u1 part and the intersection is this a and b so u1 comes from here to all the way here up to here and u2 is from this point to that point so these two are the intersections a comma b right now psi1 inverse of a is this part a1 to c1 psi1 inverse of b is d1 to b1 okay similarly psi1 psi2 inverse of a is c2 to b2 and psi2 inverse of b is a2 to d2 okay not only that when you come from from here suppose is from here you go to here inverse image that is psi1 inverse okay and then uh, sorry so if you first comes psi1 here and then take psi2 inverse here so you get a map from a homeomorphism from a1 c1 to c2 b2 that must be order preserving okay similarly you start from here d1 b1 come here and then go by inverse image you get d1 b1 to a2 d2 that must be also order preserving so this is these are the assumptions that I have both are order preserving then the conclusion is that this u1 union u2 is a circle not only that once you have that one there is nothing else m is a connected manifold so it has to be whole of this one this is what we have to see okay so pick up any point t1 comma s1 as shown here namely a1 less than t1 less than c1 and d1 less than s1 less than b1 then there exist unique points t2 and s2 what are they look at the image of s1 here and that is image of something here because this is homeomorphism in a way so there is a unique s2 here which comes to that one these are the points t1 psi1 of t1 is this point psi psi1 of s1 is this point they are also equal to psi1 of psi2 of s2 and psi2 of t2 respectively okay so you have started such uh, picking up this point so clearly these t2 and s2 will be obviously inside that a2 to d2 and c2 to b2 that's all okay after that what you do now you just define the map lambda from 0 to 2 pi closed interval to m by the formula in the first part it is psi1 in the second part it is psi2 the only thing is you have to adjust the whole thing by reparameterizing the intervals okay and where do you take up to 0 to pi i am going to take psi1 pi to 2 pi i am going to take psi2 here in the clip, clip picture it is clear so from this point i will map up to this point using psi1 okay from there so parameter is pi pi here now 
the pi to 2 pi I will use this map from S2 to T2 I, I will ignore the rest of this overlapping part S2 to T2 I will reparameterize from pi to 2 pi similarly T1 to S1 I am parameterizing 0 to pi so map will be like this okay so this part is coming here this part is coming here so the arrow is here this arrow is here this way so you have to understand so this is counterclockwise sense I have taken here so I have to when I map this point t1 as 0 here ok e power 2 pi as 0 or cos theta cos 0 plus sin uh, comma sin 0 that is the point here and go all the way up till here and then pick up psi 2 here so the idea is clear and formula is also clear what I have to do put some a t plus b so that t1 to t1 to s1 this interval goes to 0 to pi so that is the whole idea so this is the map okay. similarly t2 to s2 to t2 goes to pi to 2 pi ok so s1 minus t1 by pi times t plus t1 when t is 0 this is t1 when t equal to pi 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 cancels out t1 t1 cancels it will be s1 Similarly, when t equal to pi here, this will be 0, so this will be s2. When t equal to 2 pi, this will become pi pi, so as t2 minus s2 plus s2, that will be t2. Okay. So, you take psi of this, psi of that, except when these two points are the same, namely, there are two formulas, you have to see they are same. Why they are same? Because psi 1 of this, psi 1 of this point, psi 2 of that point are the same, that is all. Similarly, when it is 2 pi also at the end, they are also same, you see. So, that is what you have to see. Okay. So, what happens is, first of all, 0 to 2 pi, it is continuous. Okay. Because on the, on the interval psi, uh, on the common point, they agree. So, it is a continuous function. In each, each, in each interval, 0 to pi and pi, um, pi to pi, it is given by a homeomorphism. So, it is injective this injective because they are mapped into different components different parts of the things here you see and here here comes the important thing that they are order preserving so there is a common portion here namely i have taken this part so this part is covered by psi 2 also i have covered this part this part of this this is covered by psi 2 also on the intersection they are order preserving therefore the left out parts are you know they, they, are, they are never mapped by psi 2 onto this part so that is the whole idea so this is, this is similar to uh, what we have verified in the first case okay so the entire thing is injective except 0 and 2 pi are mapped to the same point oh, that is well and good because that is precisely what we wanted here therefore this 0 to 2 pi will factor down to what to s1 see 0 and 2 pi are mapped to same point right therefore lambda factor down to a continuous bijection from s1 to u1 u1 and u2 what is the projection map here from 0 to 2 pi to s1 capital s1 t going to e rest 2 pi e raised to t just e raised to pi i t e raised to i t because 2 pi I have taken so t goes to e raised to i t or just cos t plus i sin t so that is the fact so under that this will give you a homeomorphism now continuous bijection from the circle to m s1 is compact m is house door therefore this is a surjective map so it is a uh, uh, it is it is not surjective it is not, it, we don't know that one it is surjective onto u and u and u2 so whatever it is it is homeomorphism onto its image and the image is u and u and u2 that much is covered but then u and u and u2 is open as well as being compact it is closed also 
therefore it must be the whole space because m is assumed to be connected so every bit is used here so we have completed the proof that m is actually homeomorphic to the circle in this case okay so two important cases which will produce the two different uh, final final uh, conclusions have been covered so now the claim is that there is no other case okay Th these are the only two cases that's okay that is the whole idea all right so of course so I, I, in the second case we have yet to prove we have to complete the proof also there is also that part having taken care of these two favorable situations we now claim that we are always in one of these two cases what is the meaning of that let me elaborate start with a hausdorff space psi1 and psi2 from minus 1 to plus 1 this doesn't matter you could have taken any open interval minus 1 to plus 1 to x be homeomorphisms on to some open subsets u and u2 of x respectively neither of them contained in the other assume that intersection is non empty then these are the only things that can happen no component of psi1 inverse u1 intersection u2 which I have, I have assumed that it is non empty will be an open interval of the form a comma b for some minus 1 less than a less than b less than 1 in other words it is this open every every component is an open interval right because they are all subsets of now minus 1 plus 1 so connected components of an open subset are open intervals those open intervals none of them will be able to avoid both the end points away from the end point that is the meaning of minus 1 less than a less than b less than 1 then what can what else can happen it can happen only it one of them one of the uh, end points must be there in the interval so i as you minus 1 if my plus 1 is also there it is a whole space it cannot be whole space so only minus 1 to b it can be or it can be a to 1 so there are only two possibilities therefore the conclusion is in particular u1 intersection u2 has at most two connected components okay see if once you have proved this one this in particular this this is obvious because connected components of u1 intersection u2 are in one one correspondence with the connected components of psi1 inverse of u1 and u2 inside the interval see this u1 u2 is happening inside the topological space x but here we have come to in the open interval so there you can see there are only this possibility so there are only two possibilities at the most you have two components so this is the strongest uh, thing first we have to observe next if u1 intersection u2 is connected that means there is only one component then u1 u1 in u2 is homeomorphic to an open interval this is our first case so that's what i have to verify if u1 intersection u2 has two components then u1 u1 in u2 is homeomorphic to s1 this is the second one so this is precisely the meaning of saying that there is no other possibilities okay let us verify this one so we have to just verify this one these two i have just elaborately tell you how this one comes as solved you have already seen it but let us see so why this happens indeed the argument for this is already used so i will again elaborate on this one first of all note that psi a inverse of u1 u2 is a proper open subset of minus 1 plus 1 it cannot be the whole space because neither u1 nor u2 is contained in one one contained in the other so u1 intersection u2 cannot be the whole of u1 similarly cannot be whole of u2 moreover its components are all homeomorphic to open intervals and 
they are in one one correspondence with the components of u and intersection u2 because psi i is are homeomorphic the emphasis here is that none of them will be some middle portion of minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 less than a less than b less than 1 so that is not possible assume on the contrary that one of the component is of the form a b with minus 1 less than a less than b less than 1 okay suppose it has happened we want to say it doesn't happen that means we have a middle portion here something okay then look at psi 2 inverse of psi 1 of a b that is some other c d that is contained inside again minus 1 plus 1 here i don't know what is happening psi 1 something has bad something bad has happened here i don't know i don't care something has happened here where c d c equal to d c equal to minus 1 d equal to plus 1 any all cases are allowed okay only thing you know that here also that c d is not the whole of minus 1 plus 1 okay let us see that may be useful or that may not be useful so let now alpha from minus 1 plus 1 to minus 1 plus 1 denote the function t going to minus t the reflection by replacing psi 2 I don't want to change the psi 1 there is psi 1 there is something bad has happened replacing psi 2 by psi 2 composite alpha if necessary I could have taken any other uh, any other homeomorphism right so take psi 2 composite alpha instead of psi we may assume that psi 2 inverse psi 1 from a b to c d is increasing that is order preserving if it is order reversing I would do this one if it is preserving I do not want to do any I, I, I will not uh, change it at all ok if necessary do not change it unnecessarily that is all ok when if it is increasing do not do anything if it is not increasing that might, might be increasing because there are only two possibilities for a homeomorphism of intervals to intervals ok therefore you can change the second one by reflecting so now it will be increasing so once you assume that C D is a proper subset of minus 1 plus 1, right? So it follows that minus 1 less than C less than 1, okay, that is the my assumption, or minus 1 is less than D less than 1. Okay. So I am assuming I am not assuming anything on A B. A B is a bad assumed to be bad here. What C D can be? There are only two possibilities. Alright. So, I am using that fact now here that C D is not the whole of minus 1 to 1. So, one of them at least C or D must be strictly inside the interval and that is going to cause us problem namely in the former case suppose C is the in the C is in the middle of the interval in the second interval ok. What happens psi 2 of C and psi 1 of A they are coming very near but they are not identified they are in the open part right so what happens is psi 2 of c and psi 2 one of are distinct points of x which cannot be separated by open sets in the latter case the same thing happens with psi 1 of b and psi 2 of d which cannot be separated by open sets so in either case you have got a contradiction to the hausdorffness of x okay so here is the picture you know fully explaining what is happening this is your u1 okay and that is the portion of u2 other portion i haven't drawn i don't care what is happening okay so psi 1 a is coming like this this uh, psi 1 part is coming like this okay a is some in, in between minus 1 to coming here and psi 2 of c just comes here this portion and this portion will be in every neighborhood of this A as well as B as well as C. So, A and C are not A and C are distinct points ok sorry not this portion this the other portion because they are they have to continue for afterwards right yeah, this is not the end points of the interval so, this portion will be common. So, for every open interval open uh, neighborhood of psi 1 of A inside the U 1 there will be some portion every common with 
side to office. This, this is the uh, intersection part on the left, left hand side. Similarly, here what happens is there will be on the on the left hand side there will be intersection part. These portions are distinct fine. So, but as soon as you hit it, A, psi 1 of A and psi 1 of B, okay. So, they are the image, they are there inside the inside our x, right. But they are distinct points, they are in a, they are in different ones, they are not assumed to be in the intersection, right. They are open intervals. So, these two points, you know, contradict the fast darkness of the interval. So, some psi c prime to c on this part, okay, will be coming there, let us solve. So, so, I do not know how many I have draw, drawn the rest of them, some d prime to d that will be hitting, that is the whole idea. So, they are in the, uh, they are in this part of this part. So, uh, rest of the part, here they are, they will be common. So, here all of them will be common. So, you cannot separate them by this joint open subset. Okay, so that completes the proof of this first claim that no interval can be of this form. Once you have that, you have only two components, at the most two components for the intersection. Now, I have to say that all the hypothesis of the first case is covered or all the hypothesis for the second case covered, that is all. Then these two and three are the only possibilities. Okay, that is the second part and third part here. So, second part is the first part from, from whatever we have seen, it follows that for each i equal to 1 and 2, psi i inverse of u and u 2 is of the form minus 1 to a i or b i to 1, this end or the other, this end. Okay. Therefore, on in both of them, because I can apply the same thing to psi, once I, once I observed it of psi 1 by symmetry, the same thing should be true for psi 2 also. Okay. The conclusion, once you have done for psi 1, there is currently symmetry 1 and 2 you can change, that is all. So, here a 1 minus a 1 to uh, minus 1 to a 1 and 1 b 1 to 1 and then other case there also minus 1 to say a 2 and b 2 to a 1. So, these are 4 cases are possible, you know you can take 4 cases to be considered, but they are all symmetrical. So, for definiteness, you just cover one of them, argument will be the same in other cases. Okay. So, consider the case when these intervals of the uh, of the form minus 1 to a 1 and minus 1 to a 2. See, a 2 for psi 2, this is for psi 1. We claim that psi 2 inverse of psi 1 minus 1 a 1 I am assuming that it is only one component. Huh? In part 2, we are assuming only one component. So, one component is this is what is happening. If you look at the again, psi 2 inverse psi 1 minus 1 a 1 to minus 1 a 2 has to be decreasing. If it is increasing, what happens? Similarly, the a 1, psi 1 of a 1 and psi 2 of a 2 they will be coming very close to each other, but they are different. So, the rest uh, the other part will always be, the, they will have common part in every open um, neighborhood. There will be uh, open intervals common to both of them. So, they will not be selected. That is the meaning of this one. So, so if they come like this, there is a problem. So, if, so, it must be decreasing, it should be the other way around. So, lably, it should be like that, not like this. This is not allowed. So, that is the meaning of that uh, picture. This kind of uh, identification is not allowed. They have to be like this, which means this is, if you this way, the other function should be like that. Okay. So, this means that they must be yeah, here. So, so, this must be decreasing. Otherwise, it follows that every neighborhood of psi 1 of a 1 and every neighborhood of psi 2 of a 2 will intersect each other contradicting the house darkness. Therefore, this psi 2 psi 1 psi 2 inverse psi 1 from minus 1 a 1 to minus 1 a 2 is decreasing. Now, consider psi 1 prime 
namely composite with alpha phi 1 prime t equal to phi 1 of minus t then the two homeomorphisms phi 1 prime psi 2 prime fit the hypothesis of lemma 12.39 uh, now they will be exactly like this can join them no no need to worry about what is happening here okay so we are done so that is case case 2 the case 3 also similarly but i have to uh, show that the, we are inside the uh, the second case correctly now we are assuming that we have two components for intersection u1 intersection u2 it follows that phi i of u1 intersection u2 must be again end points a minus 1 to ai disjoint union bi to 1 i equal to 1 and 2 okay this psi i this is i is i here these two there are two cases to be considered again here namely psi 2 inverse psi 1 you know this component a minus 1 a 1 may be mapped to minus 1 a 2 there or minus uh, what would be one b 2 to a 2 which way they are mapped that is what I would so this psi 2 composite psi 1 inverse may be from minus 1 a 1 to minus 1 a 2 or it may be minus 1 a 1 to b 2 to 1 as soon as this happens the other one namely b 1 to b 1 should be the other component that that is fixed okay you have freedom only to choose where one of the component goes the other com component has to go to the remaining component there is no choice so i have to only these two cases here okay the first component here goes to the first component there or the first component goes to the second component there so these are two cases again by symmetry i have to just see what happens to the you know, one of the cases so case a let us take so let us look at the case a for the same reason as in 2 we conclude that this minus 1 a 1 to minus 1 a 2 has to be decreasing okay so that that thing is coming again and again so let us consider change the change psi 1 by you know by a reflection then we now claim that now you have the whole thing changed right so as soon as you change uh, the sign the increasing decreasing will change on both the components here also it will component the point is you can change the thing only on one of them automatically you can't change the other one because if you change there because the whole thing is one single interval only right though the intersections have two different components okay as soon as you adjusted the first one correctly you may or may not okay but here it is decreasing you have to change okay that's the whole idea in this in this one so that's why i have written you know, in this picture i have shown this portion coming here this portion coming here okay so now if you change this interval so that the both of them are like this then you are in a nice shape that's all all right whether you want to do it or not it just, it just depends upon you but what happens once you do that the other one okay so this one we have seen already yeah here so once you change psi 1 like this we now claim that the homeomorphism psi 1 prime psi 2 fit the hypothesis of lemma 12.40 completely clearly psi 1 psi 2 inverse of psi 1 prime minus 1 to b 1 now see uh, the all the things have changed because t has been changed, replaced by minus t here minus 1 b 1 to b 2 to 1 and therefore psi 2 inverse of psi 1 of minus 1 1 2 will be equal to minus 1 a 2 ok 1 to a 1 was minus 1 to a 1 was there now I will change the sign so this will become minus 1 comma 1 to minus 1 to a 2 ok the far end here left uh, right send end is coming into the the uh, left hand end here also it follows that psi 2 inverse of psi 1 prime is from minus 1 b 1 initial segment goes into far end b 2 to 1 so both of them will be increasing finally it follows that psi 2 inverse composite psi 1 of minus 1 1 to minus 1 a 2 is also increasing the other part is also increasing 
okay for otherwise you will have psi 1 prime minus 1 a 1 minus a 1 and psi 2 from a 2 will be violating the hypothesis <laughs> okay so that is why we are in a nice situation of uh, the second lemma there therefore the conclusion is that in this case the entire manifold has to be s1 okay we don't we don't need that right now we just want we have, because i have not assumed that uh, x is connected here okay so i say even in unity is s1 that's fine all right this is the lemma in which which just says that whatever we desired only that will happen that's all now let us complete the proof of the theorem recall that we started with a connected one dimensional manifold by second countability we get a countable cover u i of x by open sets all of them homeomorphic to say let us say phi i from u i to minus 1 plus 1 inductively we define a finite or infinite we do not know but countable okay increasing sequence that is why sequence means countable in it w k of open subsets of x such that each w k is connected union of w k is the whole space that is all first we have, we have to do this way but we will do it in much more elaborate way so I will, I will describe you as follows so how do we do that start with w1 equal to u1 so you have you have got a countable cover so you have indexed it somehow never mind but that indexing may not be very good so we are going to do some changes here so start with w1 equal to u1 having defined wk okay so what i am going to do look at all those uis which are which are such that they are not contained inside wk and those which intersect wk so in the first case whatever so w1 is okay, uh, is defined what is this s1 s1 is all those indices i in n such that ui is not contained inside u1 and ui intersection u1 is non empty now suppose there is no or uh, none of those things will intersect it at all that will contradict the hypothesis that x is connected okay there so therefore there must be some uis which intersect right now suppose all of them are contained inside you then you don't have to take them at all you can drop them out so if everything contain everything intersecting this one is contained inside u1 then again you will have a problem there will not be anything so u1 is the last thing so you are we are finished so u1 equal to all of x right so you are done no problem so that is why there this set sk is non empty non empty subset of n so there is a minimal element so take the first one that is the minimum so sk is non empty okay if sk is empty you are finished our wk has to be x there is nothing that okay so and x is connected that's what we have to use we have used that one right because otherwise it will be disjoint union okay in that in that case we have achieved our goal there is nothing to do otherwise take the minimum nk that is depends upon k the minimum take the minimum so u n k you take put w k plus 1 equal to w k union u n u n k so in the first case it is u1 w2 will be u1 union un1 then next one will be un2 and so on the uns are selected from this collection several of them may be left out maybe all of them will come but how they will come they will come only the way they will intersect the previous thing whatever has been constructed okay the collective thing so this is the union it is not one single open subset collected thing it has to intersect one of them intersect the whole whole thing something all right but should not be contained inside of this wk plus 1 is larger than w 
so we keep we, we keep increasing otherwise we get stagnated that's all now let us see inductively we claim that each wk is homeomorphic to an open interval or it is s1 there are two cases at each stage as soon as it is s1 we know that we have come to an end so what is the other case the other case is each time you get that it is an interval so there we have not yet uh, completed the proof each time it is an interval if you have stopped there it is okay it is an interval we have completed the proof but it may not stop it may be infinitely it keeps going on so in that case you have to write a small proof there that is all it means okay so let us see why this happens clearly this is the case where k equal to 1 because w1 is u1 there is nothing to prove u1 is an open interval for k equal to 2 there are two cases to be considered what are they by the previous uh, lemma we have in the situation of lemma 1 12.39 or 2 of lemma 12.40 right accordingly we have the above two conclusions see any any interval u1 is solid an interval okay or in inductively wk is an interval interval means what homeomorphic interval another one is another interval and they intersect so the connected number of connected component is at most 2 if it's 1 the union will be homeomorphic to again interval if it is 2 the union will be s1 so that is the these are the two cases okay so this way from u1 uh, 1 to 2 we pass suppose now we have come up to wk some case wk plus 1 is homeomorphic to s1 the 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 step stop the sequence stops otherwise it goes keeps going well, what is it keeps going each time you are concluding that all the wk's are homeomorphic to open intervals okay and we have got an infinite sequence one bigger than the other sequentially right so in that case why the entire union is a you know is homeomorphic to an open interval this is what we have to show so these things are not happening inside r of course right that is the whole conclusion i mean finally you have to so right now we are abstract manifolds one dimension manifolds you want to show that the entire thing is homeomorphic to an open interval which is same thing as showing that homeomorphic to r all right so that is the last part here it remains to consider the case when wk is infinite in which case e wk is a proper open subset of x homeomorphic to an open interval proper means what it is not the whole space is whole space is the sequence stops no so the infinite case is the one we have that's all starting with the homeomorphism f1 psi1 f1 was psi1 right you could have I am re-indexing it. Psi one from minus one plus one, which is W one. Okay. Apply proposition twelve point thirty with this a a hat less than a less than a prime less than b less than b. Remember this this proposition being equal to minus two. I am choosing them now. Minus two less than minus one less than minus half less than half less than one less than two. respectively and take g from alpha beta to w here i don't know what it is okay being any homeomorphism we get a homeomorphism f2 from minus 2 to this must be this must be taken as u2 the next one minus f2 minus 2 plus 2 w2 is the union such that F two restricted to the small interval, smallest minus one, minus half, plus half, is your F one. Okay, F one is defined by minus one plus one, but on and the whole larger one we don't know. Only in the smaller open interval it is F one, and that is extended. Okay, inductively having got a homeomorphism from minus k. See, this is F. This is the starting point. F one I have to, instead of psi one, 
I am using the notation F1 in the inductive hypothesis. Then I say F2. F2 is from minus 2 to 2. F3 will be minus 3 to 3 and so on. Okay. So, Fk is from minus k2 plus k to Wk similar to the above step. We get a homeomorphism Fk plus 1 from minus k minus 1 to k plus 1 to Wk plus 1 such that restricted to a smaller interval of minus k plus k, namely minus k plus half, comma k minus half. We check away half half from both sides. On that, it is fk, the old map. Okay. So, now you define f from r to x by the role ft equal to fkt whenever t belongs to this interval. Given any t inside r, it must be in one of these intervals. Okay. Once it is in this interval, even if you take k larger, fkt, the, the value of fkt on this interval is the same thing. fk plus 1, fk plus 2, they are all equal to fkt here. Therefore, ft is very defined. All right. It is straightforward to check that f is a homeomorphism. Okay, all that you have to do is continuous bijection and an open mapping directly. Okay. If to show the open mapping, you can show that any small open interval like minus epsilon plus epsilon image is open. You do not have to show the whole thing is open. Any small interval, every small interval is open, image is open, then the whole thing will be open mapping. So, I will leave that one to you, but learn this method, how to patch up homeomorphisms. If things are arbitrary homeomorphism, not agreeing with the other one, then you will have a problem. So, when you have inductive steps like this, it is possible to patch it up to get a homeomorphism the entire thing. Why it is subjective here? Because union of all W k's is the whole of x. Okay. So, here are a few exercises which will help you to understand the next topic. So, take some time to think about them even if you do not solve them completely. All right. With those words, I will just uh, leave it to you to, you know, keep looking at them so that you have some time to think about this. So here are two of one is on quotient spaces. Then this is our old uh, uh, friend about, you know, what is happening to homeomorphism from, you know, what kind of homeomorphism from one interval to another interval be there. Okay. So, this is our old topic which we have been discussing several times here. So, there is some new concept here called isotopy. It is just like homotopy, you may not. So, I have defined it carefully. So, we go through that. Then we have this uh, the transitive action. So, we have got psi p q's. So, can you see that they are also isotopic to each other? This is what one has to think about. Okay. So, next time we will study a little bit about surfaces. So, two more lectures on that. Alright. Thank you.